people of um we've seen lawyers yeah. doing going into event planning mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. so it's not it's no more seen as a layman's job mm -hmm. or a lazy man's job mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. so it's now seen as a professional mm -hmm. uh, athlete yeah. and it's now seen as people are now recognizing it so basically all the, the award com, uh, award organization now mm -hmm. are now awarding makeup artists yeah. they're now awarding event planners yes. so we are now seeing more award coming up yes so recognition is, is being is being felt yes, yes. but so. you you also mentioned that um initially the recognition wasn't there mm. but for some reason you have been able to stay afloat and yeah. and be ahead of the pack yeah what is the secret to that i think the secret is to to not give up okay persistence yeah. persistence i think um whatever you do mm -hmm. in life it doesn't people don't easily recognize it so quick yes but once you keep at it at a point in time people will get to accept what you're doing so persistence is um, one thing right. patience is another okay. thing you need to be patient don't for, for myself event planning is not like for me to make money mm -hmm. is my passion, my passion. Something so you enjoy. I go into it not because oh I really want to make money or because that is the trend of what is going on yeah it's something that I started when we hardly hear about event planners yes and now I'm still here yes, so, yeah. when it's now becoming like the talk of the town yeah. is now becoming the the um what is now becoming for the cream de la creme yeah. like they say yeah. now it's like oh you hear the oh i'm an events manager yes. oh i'm an event manager but yeah. back then when you said you're yeah. an event manager <laughs> like, people oh, look at you like yeah you're an idle person <laughs> yeah <laughs> i understand yeah <laughs> if you are there you're listening and you want to join the conversation you can do so mm -hmm. by texting zero seven five three nine six six one seven four four the number again is zero seven five Three nine six six one seven four. All right, um, Tope, let's talk about your foundation, which is okay. called the Niyilola Foundation. Yes, it is. And what it does is it caters to um women and yeah. also the family unit. What yeah. does Niyilola mean? Um, Niyilola means here is the wealth. Okay. That is Niyilola is a Yoruba name. Okay. From Nigeria. All right. And um, the English version is. This is where the wealth is. Okay. The wealth is within you. Okay. And um, when I started Ne Lola Foundation, it was, I think, um, I came up with that because I I went through my own personal journey. Okay. And um, when I started it, it wasn't the name thing just at came up with the name because Ne Lola is my late mother's name. All right. Like I said and um but along the line one day i sat down and i was like mm, maybe i should change the name of this foundation mm. rebrand it and things like that then i now sat down and wonder what's really like what you say what's the meaning of yeah. me Yilola? then that was where i got the inspiration mm. that me Yilola, this is where the world is mm. then i now connect it to what the vision is all about mm. then i now realize that what i'm trying to do is to bring out the wealth in an individual in individual and how do you do it is by letting them know that the world is inside of them mm. they need to just look for it and that was how i was able to connect the name mm. and the vision mm. and and yeah. how long has it been in existence? It's been in existence since 2013. Okay. Like I said, um, one of the reasons why I left um, um, the award organization was okay. to start Ni Lola Foundation. Okay. Although it's been, I've been doing humanitarian work for the for as long as I can remember. Right. I used to give um, gifts um, to mothers on Mother's Day. Okay. Um, 
I, 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 I just always have the passion of helping people mm. and supporting people. Okay. But in 2013, I had this heaviness inside of me. I think there was a, 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 a case study I read yes. um, in relation to a lady that had postnatal depression. Mm. And that really hit me okay. because that was one of what I went through yeah. and I've been thinking to myself, I never saw when I was going through my own personal journey, I didn't see any African charitable organization yes. to support other, chari uh, other African uh, um, mothers. And um, I now realize that even in Africa, they don't really understand what postnatal depression no, is. No, they don't. That was more of the reason why I started me Lola Foundation. Mm -hmm. Then later on, I came up with the fact that um, children, especially boys, are going through so much, but they don't have anybody they, they could talk to. Yeah. And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to bring that into the organization, trying yeah. to speak to boys mm. especially trying to understand mm. where they're coming from mm. and to support them yeah. in their education mm. and also family units yes. i said that one day everything i do is coming from my own personal journey mm. and i found that, that most marriages are breaking apart mm. we have so many um um um, mothers struggling to get uh, to look after their kids and true. we have fathers having to work so hard to to meet up to standard yes and things like that really I sat down one day I thought okay a family unit is very important yes. and we don't have that in our community yes. that's when i brought that also yeah. into um into the organization okay. and when i started even up to now i i've been self-funding myself okay. i've been doing it i've been taking one day at a time oh, right. taking one step at a time and um i believe the vision is so massive and I used, like I said, I used to help people that I don't even know on the streets. Mm -hmm. and um, But at a point in time, coming back to my legal profession, <laughs> <laughs> I decided that, you know what, um, it's one thing to help other people, yeah. but it's another thing to be legally aware of the legal um, implication mm -hmm. of charitable work in yeah. this country yeah. so i decided to register the organization right. because you know i always said everything you're doing always look at the legal aspects aspect don't that. just mm. do things because everybody is doing it you mm. have to think and think okay what i'm doing what are the legal implications mm. so i went and registered it and um i've been using my own personal money mm -hmm. i don't people ask me how do you do it? Mm -hmm. I always say it's the grace of God. It is, I, indeed. I only support whoever comes my way. Mm. I, I have a big vision for the foundation, yeah. but um, I'm not in a rush. Mm. Because um, when it started, God gave me the vision. Mm. And I'm just allowing God to take it to wherever he, he, he wants to take it to. But the plan for me, um, what we doing at the moment, it's um, on Chris, uh, during Christmas period, um, we take kids, um, on the privileged kids, to um, different places like, um, just to give them memory I know. of Christmas. Christmas. For Happy memories, yes. To give them, I always say that um, children are very precious. Yeah. And memories is very important it to is. children. Because um, it's not the amount you spend on them. It's the memory that you give them. It's the time and, uh, you spend together Exactly. With them. And uh, um, looking back, I gave up. The uh, reason why I had to leave my legal profession also mm. is because of my children. children yeah. So I gave up everything to make sure that I'm there, I'm visible. Yeah. And 
you know it's been it's been it's been challenging yeah. but at least i'm thanking god and yeah. that's what i'm trying to um advise other parents yeah. that um you can go to work but as well you can be visible in your children's yes. uh, presence yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. um yeah. It's just not spending money or spending time. I understand because mm -hmm. the thing is, if you if you work so hard to get mm -hmm. all the money in the world, mm -hmm. and you end up not 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 gaining the 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 admiration or mm -hmm. the trust of your children, mm -hmm. you have gained zero. Yeah. Because in the end, you've lost what really matters. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I really understand where you're coming from. Mm. But let's talk about how you reach out to those who really need help when um, it comes to your foundation. Uh, what I do, uh, cause I don't do, I don't do any <laughs> promotional stuff. Um, okay. Do 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 you take funding from from? No. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Like I said. People ask me, I don't know how I do it myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, it's um, that's why I said I take one step at a time. Okay. Reason why, like I've been to an inter a radio interview like this, and the lady said, "Why is it that you didn't take any funding?" Yeah. The reason why is because um, of consistency. I love to be consistent in whatever I do, yeah. and I love to be in charge. Mm. I love to know what the future holds, even though you don't know what is going to happen mm. tomorrow. Mm. And when it comes to funding, there's no uh, guarantee in funding. You can have funding this year, mm. there might not be funding for the next year. Mm. And what do you do with yes. those people yes. that you've been supporting when there's no funding? Yeah. So that's why I decided personally that yeah. I'd rather help one person mm. I know that that one person is okay yes. than trying to help five people yeah. and, and not be able to do much. Not being able to do much for yeah. them and yeah. at the end of the day you give them the hope and the hope is yeah. gone down the drain. Yeah later on so yeah. that's why i decided not to go for funding, funding. And, mm -hmm. you do it by yourself yes god and bless you for that <laughs> you know yeah but i i i have um friends families okay. that they do support, do support. and mm -hmm. um i think i i only ask for people that are led mm -hmm. to support the organization yeah. because i don't believe in going out there and i am <laughs> Some people said I'm kind of modest, mm. but I don't like talking about myself or mm. what I do. Yeah. I just do it behind closed doors yeah. and go move yeah, on. Because you, you're, you're you doing know. it for, for not only doing it for them, but you're doing it for what you believe in, yeah. not for a show off. So mm -hmm. I do understand where you're yeah. coming from in regards mm. to that. Yeah, yeah. and um, so what, what are the notable the notable stories or experiences you've come oh, across? Oh wow, there's one notable story. Yeah. It's it's really, every time I talk about this particular woman, it's like, um, like I said, um, God gave me the vision and that's why anything I do, I don't just do it for the doing sake. I do it because it comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's not something that, I always say that if I have a way, I won't do charity work mm. because I need the charity myself. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one way or the other, I think God has ordained it for me to do charity work mm. because every time I, 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 I extend the hand of hope to mm. other people, mm. I find joy mm. within myself mm. and I find the peace around me. Mm. And this woman... One way or the other, I went on ben, uh, television mm -hmm. and I was being in, I was interviewed and, and that was it. I just, you know, I do things like this, mm -hmm. forget about it and move on mm -hmm. and one way or the other, something will just bring up mm -hmm. and um, from nowhere, a lady called me and um, I was actually... You know the funny part of it that day I was actually down myself. <laughs> that's what that's why I said it's so the story is so uh, funny, so emotional, mm. so um, inspirational. Mm. I was down myself that night uh, that day and I went to sleep because mm. the way I tried to 
reduce my own tension is go to sleep mm. and I, um this my phone just rang and i picked the phone and the next thing i was like oh hello um is that me lola foundation mm -hmm. i said immediately i had me lola foundation i got up from mm -hmm. bed and i said yes mm -hmm. and um the woman said um i don't know what to say i don't know how to explain myself but someone gave me your number mm -hmm. that I should contact you and I said fine that's okay right. immediately I forgot my own problem mm -hmm. so because every time I have the opportunity to support other people mm -hmm. I'm so excited yes. and um, and she she apparently she spoke to me on the phone we just clicked mm -hmm. you know it's so it's so what, what did she say what was her problem do you know what she couldn't even tell me a problem because she didn't know how to put them it together works. but what i said to her i said do you know what i'll book an appointment to see you okay and um we will take it from there and um we just clicked and we prayed on the phone and um one thing led to the other i got to tell, uh, contact details uh, address mm -hmm. and she told me oh her birthday is actually on that Sunday that mm -hmm. I was meant to go and visit her and mm -hmm. I said oh great so um, there I am I booked an appointment to see her that following Sunday mm -hmm. and um, I never knew where this woman was living she told me she lives in Edgeway mm -hmm. And I said, I've never been to Edgeway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though I've been in UK for, for donkey years, I don't have business in yeah, Edgeway. So, you don't go there. so I don't go there. So as soon as I got to Edgeway st uh, station, I was like, where am I going? So I, I tried to find my way around. Mm -hmm. The journey was long, oh, wow. number one. I was like, oh my God, this is long. <laughs> but because of the passion I yeah. have, yeah. I just had to you know i had to go so i got to there and um i had to get a cab to get to a house yeah. you know the funny part of it of the story was yeah. that immediately the cab driver stopped in front of this white big building i was like are we there uh -huh. then i was looking at the um building i was like hmm this place doesn't look like somebody mm. that is destitute. I know. <laughs> you know, I know. But because of the the, the, the kind of person I am, mm. I didn't have any expectation. Expectation. Yeah. I was just going to go. Yeah. The, the last thing God taught me was that is not everybody that looks sh uh, shabby that are destitute. Mm. You see, some people they look fantastic very beautiful well-mannered well-dressed but there's something wrong with them deep yes. inside that you don't know yes. and that was number one lesson god taught me that day i got off the cab and um i i i was looking for the address and the address was actually the right in front of detached, you. <laughs> detached white house and i was like oh my god is this where i'm going <laughs> and i was like what could be this woman's problem i just said okay god just lead me yeah. on and i knocked at the door i saw a lot of things were going through my head and i thought okay maybe she's squatting with people mm. maybe she's just there to visit and i got there i met her daughter and they went to call her and she led me into this beautiful living room and i sat down I was like, I was shocked. I know. I was like, oh, <laughs> God, this wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting someone that is destined to someone that's in need. You, you know? know, someone that's, you know, you know, looking. <laughs> but I was wrong. I sat there and something inside me was like, don't judge. Don't expect. Just listen and let me lead you so i sat down there i said okay and i was like okay what is the problem because i saw in fact i look at the house i thought i'm living in a council <laughs> estate and you're living in a big yeah. and 
you know what it was a lesson for myself and a lesson for the woman as well because she said to, to me and she said if God can use you that is lesser than me for me then I believe there's God because um, she's look at me she was like I was looking at I like I've not even been I've, I can't even afford the kind of house you're living apparently to cut the long st story short she lost her husband and since that time she's been mentally unstable oh, she's been struggling she's been you know she is like psychologically she's she's not been able to get herself she's got everything you can imagine someone could have but she's destitute psychologically and spiritually she's you know and um when she told me her story i felt i felt so sad because yes. she's the kind of woman that's never know destitution she's never known her. hardship she's never known hardship she's never been destitute she doesn't she was born with silver spoon mm -hmm. and she's been um shielded from, from the, the hardship of the this world, world. Wow. and um, that a bubble was actually busted oh. when her husband died she said she had the wonderful husband that she doesn't even know how to change the remote control of the TV. Oh she doesn't know how to do nothing. And when the husband died, a whole world just crumbled. Oh, and, dear. um, you know, that's a sad story. It is. And she, this woman, she's in her late 50s, uh, but she looks really petite. Mm. And I'm telling you, it was like it's such a story that is not the kind of story you hear on a, on a Often. daily basis yes. or something that when you're talking about charitable work that you would take yes. like i said if you have to go for funding and they say take the box yes. you can't take her in the box yeah. she's out of the box yes she's not one of those people you can say oh i'm going to get funding yeah. for people like yeah. that yeah. but i could see beyond what people can see. see and that is the 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 joy of what i do yes, yes you know yes, it's yes. not it's not for just oh seeing a destitute person on the street yes it's for connecting with people that are even looking great yes. because i always say every one of us in our life journey we always have challenges we do and what some of us get back up and we can pick ourselves up and some of us it they just really go help. down yes we need someone to pull us up yeah that is true you know and this woman is one of those people who say she needs someone to pull her hand how long up. ago was it when you met her um that was 2000 and 13 and, yeah. and and how is she presently she she's doing great that's good i still keep in touch with her all right she still calls me okay i still i still once in a while go to meet up with her to take the kids out okay and um we more or less now becoming more like a family friend oh that's lovely than, than um a walk and she's getting better she's really in fact she told me that she to want to go into charitable work for widows wow you know so it's 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 not about money yes it's, it's about, about impacting, lives impacting people's lives, lives. Mm. it's about touching people's life yes the way she saw me she saw me that i wasn't judgmental yeah i was because she's met several people that yeah. have been so judgmental yeah and she they told her oh why don't you go and sell your house why oh, don't no. you go and do this why don't you go and do that they were telling her what to do they mm. were then listening to her. to her and that's where um, I say Nee Lola Foundation is different. It's different. We listen to people that are going through the challenges. Mm. We don't tell them mm. this is what you need to do. Yeah. We listen to them and ask them what do you need. What do you need? That you know? is good. You know, that's 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 all I that's just the the whole idea behind, idea the behind it. All right. So I know that you don't you don't uh, you don't um 
you are self-funded that's mm -hmm. how you work yeah. but do you work in collaboration with other yes foundations yes i you do. do okay I do. i work with other charitable organizations okay um um i i do i did um a program with uh, Star Children Initiative. All right. They 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 are um, organization that works with uh, children with disability. Okay. And um, anything to do with children, family, and women, mm. we work in partnership with other charitable organization. And okay. also, um, um, also an event um, uh, coordinator for hospital prison. Um, services right. they work with people that are in prison okay. and people that came out of prison and they destitute All and right. people in the hospital mm. that they were discharged they didn't have anywhere to go okay. so you know I work with different organization it, it doesn't have to be just um, women children and family right. I work in partnership with other organizations that's of interest I also did the fundraising mm -hmm. um, um, charity work for uh, cancer, breast cancer now. All right. And um, you know, I I am. Um, You're I everywhere. I just <laughs> you know, I go where my heart is. Okay. Where my heart goes, there I am. There I am. Go. You know. You let yourself to be led by the spirit. Exa Thank you. That's it. <laughs> I allow God to lead me. Yes, That's and you it. follow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Follow. Let's quickly talk about um your books. Um, I know okay. the very first book you authored was yeah. with Anita Bradshaw and it was yeah. called The Giants Within Us. Yeah. How what is that book about? The Giants Within Us. Do you know what everything I do always go in sequence. Yes. They work hand in hand. Yeah. Giant Within Us has to do with is like Ni Lola Foundation. This okay. is where your word okay. is. Giants within us is we have a giant that yes. is in us. Yes. We need to let that giant out. That is true. And um, giant within us is a book that was um, co um, that was um, done together with Anita Bradshaw right. and other few ladies. Okay. We came up. Anita Bradshaw came up with the idea. All right. And she called me and said, "Oh, Tope, I'd love you to be part of this inspirational book." Okay. And basically, what we do is that people, women that has gone through the tough journey of right. life, okay. and they've been able to come out better. They, we all came together, okay. and most of us wrote our story right. how we've how the journey has been and how, how we've been able you. to build ourselves mm. to move on okay so it's the giant we'll be able to unleash the giant, giant. inside of us mm. and we'll be able to take our challenges to make us a better person yes and um that's what the book is all, all right. about how yeah. long ago was this book written um in fact, 2013 was a very <laughs> active year for me. That okay. yeah, 2013 yeah. through 2014. All right, and and where yeah. can we get this book if we're looking uh, for it? Giant within us. It's um on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, it's all on right. Amazon. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, and the second book is called Lifestyle M O T. Tell yes. us about that. Oh boy. <laughs> like, um. It's another inspirational book for me. Okay. And the funny part of it is that even though I wrote Lifestyle MOT, yeah. I still take inspiration from that book okay. on a daily basis. Right. Um, I think I just woke up one day. I, I, funny enough, I don't see myself as an author, okay. but because of my legal background and the fact that I write a lot, mm -hmm. I get inspiration a lot. Mm -hmm. So I just came up one day I think I was just led by the Holy Spirit okay. and I just heard lifetime emoti I've never heard that word before yeah it's very so unique honestly someone saw me at the library one time I had the book and yeah. I was signing it to post it to someone uh -huh. and honestly the gentleman just saw it and it was like oh did you write that book and I say yes he said wow that's very catchy lifestyle yeah. emoti yeah, what's it all about the gentleman bought the book oh wow i'm telling you <laughs> that is how catchy the name is yes. and you know when god gave me the 
the the name yeah. it was like lifestyle and multi what's it all about <laughs> then i thought to myself okay lifestyle how do you live your life yes mot how do you help yourself to become a better person yes it's like a car yeah if a car breaks down mm -hmm. or the, a yearly um check mm -hmm. you take it to the mechanic they check it mm -hmm. make sure